we're going to continue talking about resonance. And just to go over it again, let's say it's a condition where at some frequency uh, we get a lot of, you know, we get a lot of displacement. And I mentioned the reason for this is because this frequency uh, results in the maximum stored energy. And obviously, obviously, uh, the case where there's maximum stored energy, we have maximum strain or maximum displacement. And that is for, for example, for the same electric field, we get maximum displacement. For the same electric field, we get maximum uh, stress. So this, or, or stress or displacement. So this is the case. Uh, this is the kind of condition. And now we'll explain what that means a little bit more. So I'll take example from the mass spring damper. Mass spring is K. And let's say we have a force applied on this mass. And it's, always, and it's varying by time, and let's say it's sinusoidal. Uh, let's say we're measuring the uh, displacement delta D from the uh, zero position, from the rest position. So if we are applying a low, low frequency uh, excitation, so low omega, the frequency response of the material is going to look like this. It's going to be similar to, let's say we're applying electric field. These are, these are all cases where we're applying electric field. We're applying electric field. Uh, therefore, we have an electric field going really slow. Okay. And we can imagine uh, if we apply an electric field, we're going to get um, the, the displacement equal to this, this ratio. So pretty much, uh, there won't be much, uh, you know, lag behind this electric field and the strain. You know, as you apply electric field, the you know strain is positive, electric field is positive. So pretty much the strain is going to be, you know, going with the electric field, right? So we have this is the strain, or delta D it doesn't make a difference right now, uh, and then the top one. Uh, this is the electric field. So we have this kind of relationship. For low omega, we can just imagine go, it's going slowly. The force is moving slowly up and down and up and down. We can tell that there's not going to be uh, that as soon as we apply the electric field, the material is going to go, sl the, uh, it's going to expand up when we pull up, and it's going to expand down when we pull down. And if you go really slowly, it'll be pretty much in line with what we're doing. But then take the other example. very high frequency. So we use a very large frequency in this case. Basically, uh, if we do that, let's draw this box again. So we are applying a force, but the force is going we're pulling up and down really fast, really, really fast, so fast that um, the, 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 the displacement is zero. It doesn't even move at all because you're pulling on it and pushing on it so fast that that it doesn't even, uh, the spring doesn't even move. I mean, the mass does not even move because it doesn't have time to respond. As soon as you're pulling it up, it slowly starts to move, it starts to move over, and then you pull it back down. Then you start to move over and then pull it back down. You go so fast that the material cannot respond. So this is, what, this is what happens at a very high frequency. So at a very high frequency, we have uh, this case where we have the electric field again. Let's draw it at the same height. Really, if you drew these on the same diagram, uh, the high one, we have, it, it looks something like that. 
because of a really high frequency. But we're just drawing it with this as a different scale than this top drawing. Basically what happened is that we'd only get a small amount of displacement. Very small amount. Or strain. And you can use either one. So we get a very small amount. And this is because the frequency that you're doing in it, you know, you're you're pulling and pushing on the material out with is going so fast. Therefore the material doesn't have time to move. And actually, what happens is, is the material is not in phase with them, is not in phase anymore. The material actually moves opposite. And this is what happens as you as you're pulling on it, it's pushing, pushing away from you. As you're pushing on it, it's coming toward you. As you're pulling on it, it's going away from you. So therefore, you're not really, you know. And depending on this phase, you're not really like getting any positive work done. Basically, you're pushing on the material when it's coming toward you. You're pulling on it when it's coming away from you. Therefore, the total energy stored in the material is not increasing. And the you know the the stored energy, and the and the case. And then we have some. Let's say we have some intermediate case. So we have this is the case of 180 degrees phase, which is basically opposite. So if we have, uh, you know, this this much this this is a sine curve, and we have 180 degrees phase is the opposite. So this is negative sine, or 180 degrees phase lag. Here we have completely everything is in line. We have both electric field as a sign, and we have strain or displacement as a sign. So they're both in order, and this is what happens at low frequencies. High frequencies, what happens is that you're pulling on it and it's coming it's coming the other way. And this happens to such an extent that if you have a really high frequency, then the mass won't move. So basically what happens is this. Let's just draw a relative and so this is just a you know just for the phase picture. This is for the phase. We start with something which is going in line. We start with this. But then this kind, of, this you know, this strain in this electric field, electric field is going to be a constant, but strain is going to be the thing which results from the electric field. So it's going to be be the thing that changes with frequency. So as we increase frequency, the strain is going to move here, and then eventually it's going to get here. The strain. So we have case A, case B, and case C. So W A is less than W B is less than W C. So this is what happens slowly as you increase the frequency. You're gonna get uh, this kind of shift uh, where the where the kind of phase changes. And what does that look like on a diagram? On a phase, on a pure phase diagram. So I mentioned that we started in order. So we'll start this. Uh, so we'll call this side phase. And we'll call this angle frequency. And we'll call this arbitrary point, uh, let's say 90. So basically, as as we're increasing the phase, this is what it's going to look like. This is minus 180, and this is zero. So the phase kind of shifts. Let's say this call this WC, and this call this WA. This is a very low frequency. This is a very high frequency. <laughs> And because we're drawing it like this, and we'll call this middle point kind of where it ends up, this is the, what do you guess it? You guess this number? It's the resonance frequency. So I mentioned that point of zero phase, uh, that point is the resonance frequency. And let's look at, let's just examine what that phase looks like. So we had, let's just draw electric field. And we're going to draw displacement. So this kind of looks like a negative cosine. Uh, not the best drawing, but this is displacement, and this is electric field. 
So this is actually resonance. This is actually that point where we have the most displacement. So this again is delta D, and this is resonance frequency right here. So why does this happen? And why is this related to this 90 degrees phase here? There's 90 degrees phase between these two values. Yes, there's 90 degrees phase between electric field and uh, and the strain or uh, strain or the displacement, but in this case the velocity. Let's draw that in red. The velocity is the derivative of the strain. So right, if we have the uh, strain equaling, or let's just call it uh, dt, delta dt, and it, and it has some amplitude. The resulting, you know, value, you know, the derivative of time of the velocity is going. I mean, of the displacement is going to be the velocity. So we'll call it vt, and that has its own uh, amplitude, but it's uh, related to this cosine. So basically, lagging 90, 90 degrees uh, from the sine. So basically, this if it's lagging, if we're lagging this cosine here. It's, if this is a 90 degrees ahead, so we go 90 degrees back to get to the uh, uh, to get to the velocity. So there's a velocity, and now the velocity is in line with the electric field. So if you take this case, so the velocity is going this way. Let's draw a sideways mass. We're forcing it that way. So we're we're forcing it. It's going. Let's say we're going that way. The velocity is going that way. The force is going that way. Therefore, you're increasing the energy, right? While the velocity is going in the same direction as the force, this is called the resonance point, where you're where you're pulling the material in the same direction. You're not pulling it opposite. Because when you're pushing on it opposite, you're you're going to want to decrease the velocity, and by decreasing the velocity, let's say the other case happened, you know, you had this mass, and it was going this way, you know, because obviously you know it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Uh, that's uh, that's what it does. But if you have a force at this time, which is going to be positive, let's say that at this incident time, let's call it t naught, uh, the force is positive. And at this instance, at this instance t naught, uh, the velocity is negative. Uh, then we're going to be kind of pulling against each other. We're trying to move one way, but the uh, velocities, but but the uh, we're trying to move one way, but the force is pulling it the other way. Therefore, we're not increasing the energy of the system; we're decreasing it. You see, we're not allowing energy to be stored. So when let me write this out. When the forcing is in the same direction, aka zero phase, with the velocity. We have resonance.